Next, uh, we have uh, Fayez uh, Hamad, uh, who's a lecturer at USC Department of Political Science and International Relations, and he's going to cover the Ottoman era uh, and Ottoman Palestine. Hello. Thank you for being here, and I'm definitely happy to be among you today. Uh, today, I want to discuss the uh, late Ottoman period of, uh, over Palestine, and uh, particularly the last century of the Ottoman rule. Uh, and to, the hope is uh, for me to uh, outline uh, and discuss the dynamics uh, and developments uh, that uh, led the transformation of Palestine from a majority Arab country uh, into the creation of the state of Israel in 1948. Um, uh, so there'll be a discussion of uh, socio, um, societal, uh, political, geostrategic conditions that gave rise to these conditions uh, to achieve the outcome that I, uh, we're discussing here. Uh, for um, a thousand or a thousand, uh, nearly 1,100 years, Palestine was uh, ruled by an Arab Muslim um, uh, regimes uh, or Muslim-led uh, uh, regimes uh, since the Muslim conquest in the seventh century. And to pick up from uh, where Munir had left, when the Ottomans uh, conquer Palestine in, in 1516, the Sultan Ottoman uh, Salim I entered Palestine on December 29th, 1915, excuse me, 1516, and he was presented with the covenant of Omar that he was referenced, and he put it over his head as a sign of respect and his commitment to continue abiding by its uh, etiquettes. Uh, my goal here is to uh, first give you an idea of what Palestine was like in the late Ottoman period, and, um, and then uh, bring these dynamics that I have been uh, referencing, I referenced earlier. Uh, Palestine was um, <clears throat> uh, um, part of a, a governance, and the Ottomans have ruled over many governance within the Arab world and outside of it, and it was divided into different districts, or what the Ottomans called Sanjaks, and Jerusalem had uh, been always uh, allowed to rule with a direct reporting to the uh, Ottoman Sultan uh, in Constantinople, uh, giving its uh, religious significance to the Ottomans and to the Muslim community. Uh, so the Ottomans controlled over the Arab provinces uh, with more centralized uh, element than the outlying provinces beyond the Arab core of the Ottomans. And locally, uh, the Palestinians, uh, you know, affairs were led by the leading clans and prominent uh, families uh, to rule, you know, um, to control government activities and functions, collect taxes, maintain security. Uh, at a time when Palestine in the 19th century was entering or becoming part of the world economy. And at the time also when the Ottomans were invoking or uh, um, uh, deploying a set of reforms uh, and restructurings giving the pressure that the Ottomans were feeling from the European great powers, which I will talk about in a minute. And these set of organizations were called the Tanzimat, reforms and restructuring elements. To zoom out, uh, you know, and discuss these larger dynamics. Uh, one uh, important theme to understand is what was called as the Eastern question. It's a question that was uh, contemplated by uh, European policymakers uh, and strategists on the question of what was going to happen to the Ottoman territories and domains at a time when the Ottomans facing decline vis-a-vis -vis the rising power of Europe. So the question for them, uh, and for Europe in particular, particularly Britain, it wanted to maintain European balance of power so as not to allow things to get out of hand where Britain will become at the losing end of that. So there was a balance act, so to speak, for uh, that long 19th century uh, in, uh, you know, globally. And there was a concept here that the Ottomans uh, have dealt with the great powers that was called capitulations. It had set up agreements that the Ottomans have granted the Europeans uh, you know, relaxed terms of trade, extraterritorial rights within the Ottoman domains, and they, was, they were giving to the Europeans from a position, through Ottoman's position of strength, to you know, as a good will and to encourage trade. But uh, the the problem that the Europeans uh, were, or rather, the Ottomans were facing as the balance of power shifted away from them into the Europeans was the disadvantage or the, the, the attempt for, by the 
Europeans to abuse or misuse these agreements in the context of the, particularly the French-British rivalry, the internal integration of the Ottoman period uh, era, and also the Russian-Ottoman conflicts that took place for a long time. The second element that brought about the uh, changes that I, uh, I outlined earlier is the Egyptian uh, invasion and occupation of Palestine, which it was the control of which was under the Ottomans. So you know, the Muhammad Ali and his son, who were the governor of Egypt, challenged the Ottoman rule, drove up to Palestine, occupied it, and that era inaugurated what came to be known as the opening of the Holy Land uh, to, Euro to European political and religious and cultural penetration. Uh, in the, during this period, uh, the, uh, the, the Egyptians wanted to appease the Europeans so as not to compel their withdrawal as per the Eastern question that Britain and others were concerned about. And as a result, the Egyptians allowed the opening of European consulates in Palestine, beginning with the British one in 1838, Prussia, Sardinia, the French, Australia, and the US and the Spanish consulates. And uh, there was definitely, along these diplomatic efforts, an increased uh, public interest in Europe about the Holy Land. Uh, and the, this, uh, uh, the element or the point of entry for the Europeans where came to be the protection of the non-Muslim minorities within the Ottoman Empire in general, but specifically in Palestine vis-a-vis -vis these changes. And these, uh, the, the religious activities and missionary activities became institutionalized under the Egyptian control of Palestine. And the influence uh, was, b b starting that point, began to increase in a significant manner. So the, what, we, what we could refer to as the European cultural religious penetration began with the <clears throat> French claiming the right for the protection of Catholics in Palestine and beyond. Russians, you know, they claimed protection over Orthodox Christians. And Britain was that to be left out, uh, began to look for uh, um, local uh, patrons and then hence settled or protection of Protestants and then the Jews. So each great power laid the claim over the protection of uh, the prospective Christian or uh, non-Muslim uh, religious groups in Palestine as a mechanism to increase their influence and penetration into the Ottoman domain. Uh, for example, the, uh, as a result of these uh, changes, we have the uh, Anglo-Prussian uh, Episcopal See in Jerusalem which was building the, you know, the Protestant cathedral or Christian Christ uh, that was uh, ruled by alternation of bishops between Britain and Prussia. Uh, and then uh, as a result of, these, of all of these changes, we have uh, now increased calls and petitions in Europe, uh, you know, among the publics for the opportunity to build Christian imperial state in Palestine. And uh, the... Uh, the Holy Land began to be, uh, to assume a special role among Europeans in that European foreign policies began to be centered around the concept of Holy Land and the protection of non-Muslims. Um, the theme was that no European power dreamed of having an exclusive control. The understanding was that there will be some internationalized presence of the different European powers in Palestine, but that of course came to change. And then with all of these developments and changes, we have a massive increase in the interest for reconquest, colonization, and territorial claims of Palestine by Europeans. Then another concept in the context of these political, cultural shifts and changes, the concept or the ideology of doctrine of restoration of the Jews, uh, which uh, offered an ideological legitimization, uh, first infused by the Anglican uh, Kiliastic by the Anglican Messianism and Evangelism, the idea the last day of judgment is linked to the restoration of Jews who need to be ingathered in Palestine and accept uh, the Christian gospel, which is a prerequisite for the advent of the kingdom of Christ, and hence the Jews at that process will be asked, will be converted into Christianity. The only debate among Europeans, particularly Britain, was whether the Jews need to be converted before their restoration or once they're restored. Uh, so this restoration idea became actually a, a rose to the level of foreign policies of Europeans trying to convince the Sultan uh, of the Ottoman Empire to, to allow the Jews to return to Palestine. Um, and during the 19th century, there were plenty of crises, uh, you know, diplomatic nature, whether it was the Egyptian occupation of Palestine and Syria, 
the Europeans attempt to eject the, European, the Egyptians, 1830, 1840, you have the Crimean War, you have the uh, Berlin uh, uh, Conference, and in each of these, you saw in Europe a rise of what seemed to be called the signs of the time, seizing these uh, uh, Eastern crises to talk about the restoration of Jews in Palestine, uh, to, the Palest to Palestine. And even without this uh, biblical restoration need, there was still uh, a wider belief that Palestine was God-given home for the Jews, and it became an essential component of the British understanding of Palestine itself. So the, all of these elements uh, served as rational uh, justification for what was to come. Uh, late 19th century, or actually for much longer than that, uh, Europe was, uh, of course, had been facing um, or producing anti-Semitism, uh, and there was hence the rise of the Jewish question. Europeans were asking what to do with the Jews who ultimately do not belong to the West, because they actually belong to the East, and therefore uh, the idea is, was to restore the Jews to their rightful place in the East. That's one objective. And the other one is to facilitate the departure of Jews from Europe, giving the anti-Semitic, the deep-seated uh, deep anti-Semitic element in Europe. And hence, these elements co co coincided or converged with the emerging British imperialist designs. And hence, Zionism became the solution for all these different problems. And the convergence of the interests of the Zionist movement with those of British imperialism. And as a result, restoration was linked to colonization project and they were both linked to the goals of Zionism. And then you have World War I, which ultimately produced, as a result of all of these developments and dynamics, in, uh, 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 the result of that was the Balfour Declaration when Britain promised uh, that Palestine should be the Jewish homeland, uh, and that uh, resolution or declaration was issued in November 2nd, 1917. A mere two weeks later after that, uh, Britain conquer, you know, conquered Jerusalem, and um, a, a General, uh, General uh, Al-Nabi uh, gave, or in, in working with the dictate or the request of the Britain Prime Minister, uh, that Br Palestine need to be delivered by Christmas for, as a Christmas gift for the British people. The, the takeaway I would like you to begin with is that the indisputable or the indispensable role of the great powers in these developments, and up to that point, it has been the role of the great, great Britain uh, in this uh, effort. And of course, the delivery of Palestine as a Christmas uh, gift to the British people meant or entailed the fulfillment of the Balfour Declaration from gift to the British people, gift to the Jews and to the Zionists. And um, since World War II, uh, to allow me to end my presentation here, uh, it has been the United States that has been assuming the instrumental and indisputed role in the, in the conflict. And uh, allow me to finish by saying, in this uh, uh, season of Christmas and December, December seemed to be a, a, a month of events in this conflict, um, the United States has the power uh, to call uh, for an immediate ceasefire and relief for the beleaguered population of Gaza, and it has the power to begin in a serious manner uh, the resolution of the conflict based on equality and other universal values to both Jews and Palestinians in the Holy Land. Thank you.